Hello there, and welcome to the fear of painting. How long were you holding on to that joke for? I don't want to talk about it. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. This whole video concept was a trend on YouTube a couple years ago. Jazza did it, Jenna Marbles did it, heck, even Cave Town did it, and yours truly also did it. Uh, in MS Paint, so I didn't exactly follow the assignment, did I? So I kind of feel like I missed out on a fun little painting activity. In addition to that trend, there's been another little, I guess, micro trend going around where people thrift beautiful little pastoral, quaint paintings. They take those paintings and they paint over them to make them a little spooky, turn them into Halloween decor. My friend Kathleen did it with beautiful results. You should check out that video after you watch this one. I feel left out and I want to do it. However, why go to all the trouble of leaving your house and going to the thrift store and finding a painting when you happen to be an artist and you could just paint a painting yourself? So this week I want to do a little bit of trend fusion cuisine, follow a Bob Ross tutorial, but make it just a little bit spooky. All right, so I finally decided on a painting I'm going to be recreating Mountain at Sunset from season 12, episode 10. I picked this one because it seems like a good mix between something that I could potentially turn spooky and something that's not already spooky. But it's sunset, so it's got that moody lighting. One little thing that I think is necessary for you guys to know is that I am not using oil paint for this. Not even close. I'm using paint ranging from pretty good acrylic to Walmart grade acrylic to Dollar General washable kids paint. So check that out. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Listen, I don't have time for oil paint today. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make it work. I know that this is not a technique that is for acrylic paint. I don't care. So I don't have any kind of clear gesso, whatever he primes his canvas with. I primed it with, you guessed it, acrylic paint. With that, baby, we're ready to get started. Hi, I'm glad to see you again today. I thought today we'd do something a little bit different. He says that and then he just paints a mountain with some trees. I today with a thin, even coat of liquid clear. And let me say it again, thin coat. Go up here and get started on the two inch brush. Just tap a little color. In two inch brush. <laughs> just start and just drag <laughs> That looks terrible. Hold on. It's already going south. It's fine. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? You're looking at me. Um, oh, this is the crustiest brush I have. Maybe we can use this. This is actually the brush to my Barch cement glue pot. That'll work. Let's keep going, Bob. Oh, see, that's fine. This is actually working pretty well, all things considered. I'm gonna be taking some artistic liberties here. Okay, my paint's drying. We gotta work faster, Bob. Into crimson. Lizard crimson. crimson. A lizard in crimson. I've made that joke before. Oh, he's going, he's doing that. Oh boy. These colors are very transparent, so you get some beautiful effects. No, they're not. They're neither transparent nor beautiful. Bob, slow down. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, I'm not that fast. Oh, this video is gonna be hell to edit. Can't wait. See, for this, uh, we want it to be scary, so it doesn't matter if it's good. Make sure to also get some bits of black mixed in with your red paint by accident. That always makes it better. <laughs> that doesn't muddy your colors at all. Makes everything just like really good and nice. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> but you need very, very, very small amount of this liquid clear. Can't say that enough times. Small amount. <laughs> By that you mean none. See, this is where my own artistic abilities come into play. Mm, does that look good or what? I think or what is the more relevant part. That first coat of oh, it's completely dry. See, this is the downside of using acrylic paint. It dries very quickly. Oh, that's so dark. It's a very wet brush. Not at all what I wanted to do. I invented impressionism. Hello, my name is Claude Monet. <laughs> See, it's okay if it's not subtle. It's supposed to be spooky scary. You can tell the top part and the bottom part are supposed to look like each other. Are you saying they do or are you saying they don't? I'm saying I can tell that they're supposed to. Don't drag me. See, sunsets by design are abstract, and that's what's going on here. Nothing can be abstracted from this. Too much of it on the canvas. Mm-hmm. One jar. Too late, Bob. No, you paint water. You just attack the canvas. Nice little colors. 
Listen, before any of you judge my technique, I wanna remind you I'm doing this with a glue pot brush. This is not one of those nice brushes that you get at the Michaels. You can already see the comments. Like, this was a nice video and everything, but it gave me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> What's the number on the camera? 12 minutes, is that what you're looking for? I've been doing this for 12 minutes. <laughs> what if this video doesn't turn out good? You ever think about that? I do. Oh, there's blue? Where'd the blue come? Okay. Whoa. He likes to put blue around the edges of the set. It's gonna look... Like poop, okay. That's when you, you blot it on there while it's still wet. And then you scrape yeah. It I like how you're giving me advice because you've watched a lot of Bob Ross. Watch this show more. You might have. I mean, I watched it a lot as a kid. This is one of the ways I learned how to paint. You know, I, I put it on the car on the way to work like most times I go to work. You do? That's kind of wild. Be a fan of someone like my brother is Bob Ross. What if I upload just this entire video unedited to YouTube? What if I take the week off? How would you guys feel about that? Blue, hold on. We gotta beat the devil out of this brush. I just got a lot of paint water on my phone and the handle of this brush also fell in the black paint. Just gonna... <laughs> this was not a good idea. Take it. Me, five. Devil. Zero. Get some blue. Why did I like start painting this with my worst brush? Like, here, okay, before anyone judges me, I'm a cosplayer and these are for dry brushing projects. They're supposed to look degraded and sad. He's definitely on something with that clear stuff. Is that enough blue? I swear I'm an artist. I swear I know what I'm doing. See, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make this spooky. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, there's a reason why he's like, hey, get... It's impressionistic. Certainly it's fine. Impression. I know how to paint clouds well with acrylic paint. It's just, it's not the way Bob does it because this is a completely different medium and I was like misguided in my attempt to just use acrylic paint for this video, but I'm deciding to just roll with it. I would not have enough time for things to like dry properly if I use oil paint. I've also only used oil paint one other time in my entire life and it didn't go very well. I don't want to talk about it. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> Trust the process. I'm gonna go in with my smaller brush because it's slightly better in quality and I'm gonna paint a little bit, just a little bit the way I actually know how. Yeah. See, this is how I know how to paint clouds, like wet on wet technique. I better not get a single comment about what I just said. It's what it's called. The comments already exist on the, on the actual. On the actual video. Yeah, don't worry, they're there, I've seen them. The whole method is just a little different than Bob's and that's okay, it's called art style. See, it's already looking yeah, that's better. That's I think this is also gonna work well for making it look spookier. I'm introducing some purple tones here. I'm trying to have some lighter edges, like the sun is catching the clouds as it's setting, you know. Just golden hour things. How much do you think this painting is going to sell at auction? Like at least $5, right? I'm gonna time lapse some of this. Well, it looks nice on camera. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks good, yeah. <laughs> continue with this painting video, allow me to take a few moments of your time to tell you about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, if you're watching this and you're interested in getting into painting, you could follow a Bob Ross tutorial, but this video is not sponsored by Bob Ross. So instead, let me recommend any of the wonderful painting classes available on Skillshare. There's acrylic painting, learn the basics for beginners, which is a great companion lesson to this video because I chose to use acrylic paint instead of the proper medium for this tutorial. And if you want to Bob Ross it and add a little sharpness to your painting repertoire, there's also also, palette knife, acrylic painting, make your portrait step by step. So if you want to try any of these classes out for yourself, whenever you sign up with my link below, you can get 30 days free plus 40% off your first year of a Skillshare membership. And when you do sign up, it helps me out. So thank you very much for that. Now, let's get back to Art Fear. Welcome back. I caught up with Bob and it definitely did not take a pretty long time. It's coming together. It's looking pretty decent. <laughs> Look at how much further I am ahead of Bob now. About like him. This guy. He's breaking out the titanium white. What? <laughs> All right, so he goes, he does go in around. It's giving watercolor. More blue paint than this. Beat the devil out of it. They do, ooh, that was a choice. That could have been executed a little bit smoother, but. The painting like the style. <laughs> this whole video. 
They take shape, they take hours. They're just takers. What do you think of that? Not unlike Super Bowl Sunday, 1996. You know what I'm talking about. So I think this needs to happen, hold on. Like I feel like that area needs to be a little bit more purple. It's reflecting, but it's also like camera, it's absorbing more of the environment around it. You know what I mean? Huh? We just don't talk for the rest of the video. We just go, huh? 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 First, we gotta beat the devil out of it. I'm not as good at this as Bob is. Cut across. Happy little clouds. Here's the thing, you can't leave a maximalist to their own devices whenever it comes to things like this. Okay, so he's doing some mountains. I'm thinking mine's gonna be like right here. I'm just gonna commit. I'm just gonna go in. Bob always says, he says, this is the time to be brave whenever he starts putting mountains. It is the time to be brave. Have a light touch. I feel like doing the clouds first was like a bad idea, you know what I mean? Not necessarily, but like also maybe. These mountains are tall. Tall and wide. Like Adam Driver. <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some like light bowing here. Gonna do that with a little bit of red. I'm a halation girly. Kim, do you know what halation is? Whenever you have a bright point, it's sort of this light bow that's kind of red, orange, uh, around like light sources and it's beautiful. Just a little bit of that. All right, let's see what Bob does next. There's mist at the base of this mountain. A lot of this feels like, you know, a uh, like an improvised piece that ends up somehow coming out well after you improvise. This described my entire body of work. <laughs> let's put some highlights on there. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some there. This would be really fun to try with like paint that was meant for this, you know? I think I'm just gonna go in a little bit with my brush. Did you just say the phrase, wait until the mountains are dry? Excuse me. Now, I'm thinking, go back to our white. I think the trick with acrylic, if you're gonna do this, is just have like very little paint on your palette knife. You don't need much. You're not doing like a wet blend method, you're just going over dry. The Bob Ross series is basically unintentional ASMR. Well, I say unintentional, but I think there's a certain point where they realize. <laughs> They're like, people like this. They know it makes people all tingly in the upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Not ready for that. I call this mountain range. Uh, patches. Mist. Good enough. Now what, Bob? Same basic old mountain color. It's black and blue. We'll get our little roll of paint right out on the edge. And maybe he's getting brave today. Ooh, brave. Maybe this big son of a gun just comes right on. Oh, down. this big son of a gun just comes right on in here. Ooh. Oh yeah, they just, <laughs> they didn't they make just... it. We're not here to play around anymore, Kevin. Starting to the entire water. They have to reflect into the water. So like, right. this is just pre-reflections. Does it need a little gothic castle? I think it does. All right, for the first truly spooky addition to this painting, I think that there needs to be a little gothic castle right here. Just go on Pinterest and see what we can find. All right, so I think I'm gonna do, let's create a couple of spires. We really committed, didn't we? Something like that. Oh, dead is my camera. Uh, dead. That's it? I don't have another battery for this camera. Hi, 
As you might have noticed, it is now a different day. That's because my camera battery died last night and I only have one battery for that camera. So it basically meant that I couldn't record anymore yesterday. Also encountered some technical difficulties yesterday because I noticed that my B cam kept auto focusing on my face whenever I came into frame. Some of the detail footage, it's blurry. It's completely messed up, but I did paint this little castle. Here's some up close footage of it. Wow, amazing. Anyways, let's check in with Bob and keep going, shall we? We? Yes. I've made reflections. Not the best ones, but they are reflections. Oh, I think he's making grass. So I'm gonna go in with the ugliest fan brush you've ever seen. Yeah, where do we want our land to live? Maybe here? I'm gonna like interplay those two colors a little bit, I think. They're gonna flirt with one another on the canvas, you know? I think the dog's plants are always usually platonic. They're platonic? A fr okay, mine's gonna live here. Do you think they should wander up the mountain, go hiking together? Trees, they like to live on mountains too sometimes. I think maybe add a little highlight here. Yes. This terrain doesn't make sense. Like what I'm worried about right now is like my sea level. Cause I feel like in terms of the horizontal elevation of this painting, this would just like spill out that way, you know? I think I need to move this guy up just like a little bit. Does that make more sense? Well, yeah, I just, I don't know what he's gonna do over there. I don't want to go to the effort of like painting something there and then he's just like, now we're gonna cover it up. Yep, Grab your two inch brush and ruin everything you just did. I'm just like, how would the foliage climb up this mountain? Like a lot of it's gonna want to live down here near the water cause it's like trees and water. They just, they go crazy for one another. Platonically, of course. You know, sometimes trees are like, oh, but sun good too. So they want to be up high. So I think Bob is just doing his dark little line underneath the trees here. All right, so water line. Again, I am not going to do this with a palette knife because of the art fear. I'm gonna do it with my tiny little paintbrush because this is my safe space on this particular evening. I wanna be realistic about where this would show up in terms of the current lighting situation. Nice and subtle. So I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of purple all right, I'm not gonna agonize over that. I can always add a little bit more later. All right. <laughs> My brush isn't big enough. Yeah, quite firmly. This would benefit so much from a brush that is actually large enough to do this. Yeah, then again, something like that. Yes. Go down in here. I'm thinking I want this tree to kind of frame where I want that moon to be. You think that would look good if I put the moon like here? I think for mine, I want to really like highlight a couple of key areas, but I don't want to go too crazy with the color here because it's supposed to be spooky. Is that reading at all? Is she going to the Scholastic Book Fair? You know what's scary? Red. All right, let's see what Bob's up to now. I have to start making some big decisions here. Oh, we're making big decisions. You hear that? that straight down a little bit across give us indicate happy little reflection right i think that's a better reflection than what i did before <laughs> this painting method is kind of good for catharsis because you're just like all right, so Bob, he's going in with a little skinny guy, I think. So he's going back in with a fan brush. And if I do that, it's gonna look like dirt. So I'm not going to. I'm gonna go in with a watercolor brush and do mine. A few little trucks. Wait on that. Maybe there's one. What's he up to? These old big trees. There's oh yeah, one. I got a, mm. got a big Just old. Right he's got a friend here. This friend, this friend is really a big tree. He lives oh, in the he's up. Big boy. Sorry, that was aggressive. I hear? But what if I do? Ooh. Okay, I won't make him too big. I rather like that. Hey, son of a gun. There's one, there it comes. Soup. That easy. Yeah. You just here comes the airplane, the painting. Yeah. <laughs> Yellow. I'm not done. I'm having fun, Bob. What is the scariest kind of tree? Definitely like the real wiry ones with no leaves on them. We gotta put some of those in here, right? I think I'm also gonna add just like a log here. Tell you what, let's do. Let's have some nice rocks in the back here too. Some need to live here. Give them a little, little touch of highlight. 
right up here. A little touch of highlight. Just sort of mixed on the knife. Just bring them down so they cover up the edges of your rock and make them look finished. That easy. This big old tree touches Ooh, sort of bark. the ground. What you can do using the clear, but you want to thin this paint down. Add some twigs in. Usually, it's like, let me add a few twigs here, but you're like, let me add a lot of twigs. What can I say? Your girl likes detail. There comes another one. Spooky enough? Definitely. Can I do a bat or an owl? I think you can do both. I think you put bats there. You Else. Maybe an owl like That's here. Like owl owls aren't kind of on the periphery of. Yeah, owls aren't exactly attention seekers. Until they land on your friend's mailbox whenever you're trying to leave their house and they look at you. What do bats hanging on trees look like? Let me look up tree bats. Tree bats. I don't want these to look bad. Yeah, I think three is a good number, right? It's just Laszlo, Nandor, and Naja. <laughs> so I'm gonna do white to like really lift the color. And then I'm gonna go back in with red. Add color on top of that. Spooky. I think we'll call it finished. See what you can do with a liquid clear. And from all of us here, happy painting and God bless. So now I'm going to add in my crescent moon and try not to absolutely botch this. So I'm thinking like right here. What do you think of that moon size? Yes. I think some of the glow effects I'm gonna do actually with my airbrush, because I'm cheating. I am thinking about maybe I think you should extending this bridge so it's more like, you know? There's a bridge. There's a bridge here, but you can't see it very well. I'm gonna make a decision here. There's a little gatehouse here. A little gothic architecture action. Spooky little gate. Oh, I think there have to be bats. Oh, he's so tiny and cute. So I think for this, I'm just gonna get like a real watery white. I think a little ghost is just gonna live right in here. Blend that out. Something like that. I do kind of want to have one like here on the log. Like I kind of want these guys to be the subjects of the painting. These are some of the characters that live in the haunted wood. And I'll go in and add some glow effects with my airbrush. And I have him wrapping his little ghost hand around this tree. Oh, they're so spooky and lurky. What do you think they're up to? You think I need one like maybe up in here? See, he's got his hand around the tree. <laughs> I think they need a cat. What do you think, maybe like right here? Nah. The amount of cats forcing themselves into my life. Literally, I saw that stray cat again earlier tonight. <laughs> I just pet him and I tell him, you don't live here. Oh yeah, you need to get a nice tail. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it needs a jack-o'-lantern about here. I'm gonna paint it in in red first so that the color's nice and saturated. Then add in a little bit of orange. Just add a little jack-o'-lantern face. Nice. I think now Gonna go in with the airbrush a little bit. Hello. What I wanna do with this is just add a little bit of glow, very carefully. Just the lightest possible touch. Maybe add a little bit more saturation to the trees. And a bit to the sun here in this area. So next I'm gonna add a little bit of pearly white into this mixture so that I can up the brightness a little bit. So I'm gonna use this to add a little glow to the moon and the stars. 
little bit of light bowing around the castle here. So use it to create a little bit of mist in the background. Next, hear me out. I'm gonna do something that might seem a little strange with my ghosts, but bear with me. I have a little bit of like a neon green color mixed in with my white and add some spooky ghostly glow. So now I think I'm gonna go in and try to give this a red wash in a couple of areas just to brighten up the colors. So now I think the final step is just to go in, redefine some of those edges a little bit now that I've used the airbrush, highlight a couple of things, maybe add a couple more spooky details, and then I think this piece is gonna be done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a video that was a little bit different, experimenting a little bit with video style and format. Let me know if you like this format and if you want me to make more stuff like this. But to those of you who missed crafting content this week, rest assured I will be right back to that next week because that is when the release of my big Halloween project is finally coming out. So as always, if you want sneak peeks before the fact, you can sign up to my Patreon for as low as $1 a month and see all of that stress and goodness behind the scenes. And as always, the biggest thank you for these videos goes to my patrons and especially my executive producers. Rest easy. Lirael, Liana, Armler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Elizabeth Smith, Bean the Bread, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozine, Megan Penland, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Low Visa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyl S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Alama Ding Dong, Rose Kofrick, Rose Draconi, Phoenix, Brian, the cat buses early, and Miss Wicked.